All right, guys. I picked up these uh, lock nut wrenches. I got them off of Flea Bay, as per usual. Uh, I found a pretty good price on. Uh, I thought there was a set that came with all three, but apparently it was these two and and this one. So um, no, no complaints. Doesn't make any difference to me. Uh, got them for a lower price than I could find the just the set of two anywhere. So. They seem like they're new. It's got some like surface scratches on it, but like, oh, yeah, it's really gonna <laughs> make a difference in how it works, right? Uh, so, anyways, so yeah, I'm, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. They're for uh, conduit lock nuts, conduit fittings, and whatnot. And that pretty much describes it right there. It's skinny, so it can get in small places. It's uh, it should fit most. Um, most lock nuts they, is what they say. It says it fits six or eight tooth. Yeah. And dual ends allow for tightening with limited range of motions. I mean, what else is there to it? It's a, it's a great idea. I'm surprised this wasn't a more common tool or, I mean, it's obviously didn't require modern technology to make it really. Um, so it's kind of surprised that it's a seemingly a recent advent. Maybe not. Maybe it's something that's been around, but you've uh, had to be part of the electrician's Illuminati to uh, have them before, but um, yeah. How about it? it? Seems like a good tool. They don't weigh very much. I'm gonna put it in the uh, put it in my tool bag and uh, use it when I need it. Forgot to mention they also have a uh, a hole, so you can lanyard them together with something. I think I'm gonna use uh, probably you know, you know some 20 gauge, some some ballast wire. So. 20 gauge solid. I think would be appropriate choice. They do kind of stack together pretty nicely. When you're looking at a duplex receptacle, it's the plug on the top, plug on the bottom. This is another little quick guy. Uh, Quick update here, I got this thermocouple adapter that lets you plug into any multimeter that has this spacing, I guess. Um, I only have in my arsenal within reach at the moment anyways is, is this uh, CPS meter I just bought from my desk a while ago. And then I have a uh, cheap little Harbor Freight one. Within arm's reach, and the spacing does not work out for that one. Uh, at least I don't think so. Didn't seem to line up. No, I don't think so. Went from the furthest to the furthest. No. Mm -mm. So, um, somewhat universal. I think this is kind of the standard spacing for like Fluke and the other meters and stuff like that. So, anyways. This uh, meter actually came with a thermocouple that just plugged directly into banana plugs, and I've seen other thermocouples like that too, but this just gives me a few more options. This is a cheap little $2 part or whatever, so it seemed worth having just for adaptability. A couple more items here. This is a, a couple different names for this. this spud wrench, direction wrench. Um, hmm. Construction wrench, maybe I think it's another term. What are these guys calling it? A wrench spanner. There you go. Anyways, it's for lining up uh, flanges and just uh, you know, just trying to get holes lined if you're uh, putting together some kind of metalized structure or um, or like I said, flanges on pumps and things like that. So nice little thing to have. Not something I'm gonna need all the time, but found a good price on it. So. This little thing too, the rapid drive. This has got the interchangeable tip. They make ones that are just the Phillips and flat separately, but I figured the interchangeable tip would be the be the way to go. They gave you one of their handy dandy Klein ones there, the flip tip, and then uh, you can put whatever whatever bit you like in there. Also, a couple of small things. Alright, we got the next couple additions for the tool bag here. Uh, not so much the tool bag on this one, I suppose, but uh, it's a three quarter EMT or half inch rigid, rigid hand bender, conduit bender. 
Um, usually just you end up using half inch EMT most of the time you need to bend anything, but the, uh, the job does come up occasionally. Uh, it would be nice to be able to bend half inch rigid too. Again, don't use that very much, but um, nice to be able to have capacity for it. I think I'm just going to take a three piece of three quarter inch pipe for a handle there. Uh, so I'll get a, a 36 inch piece of uh, galvanized and a cap for the end handle, which should be pretty nice. Nicer than the handle they give you, I think, actually, because the end can be kind of sharp on those, actually. So, that'll be that. Nothing special there. This is the Plumber's Pal Wrench from Superior Tool. Um, pretty handy little guy. Uh, something I wish I'd had a number of number of times. It uh, grabs onto strainer baskets very easily. It has all the different configurations there. Um, I believe it will grab, uh, it'll grab a, the, a hex shape here, too, uh, in between all of those. Um, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the, the size for the uh, lock nut at the bottom of the toilet, which is something I've struggled with before too. Uh, and then these flats right here will fit into uh, like shower drains, we, uh, line up the two notches they have in there. So uh, it's really super light. It's aluminum. It's powder coated aluminum. It's got a nice squishy handle on it. So I'm not going to leave this in my plumbing tool bag because it's not something I'm going to need all that often. Uh, but I'm going to leave it in the van just in one of the compartments or maybe even hang it up because it's really light, so um, seemed like a great buy. So that's uh, that's what I got for now. Just another quick uh, update here. I just got a new pair of wire stripper pliers um, out, of, uh, mm, out of necessity, I would say. Uh, these still work um, just fine. They're starting to get a little stiff, but I'm sure I could, you know, if I wanted to, I could lube them up or whatever, but... Uh, um, they still function for the most part, but uh, as you can see here, had a little incident. Uh, I now have uh, two, two 12 gauge holes and uh, no, no 14 there. Um, anyways, don't want to talk about that, but uh, these are going to be my new everyday, everyday carry ones. Uh, unlike a lot of the other tools um, that I I have have shown lately uh, that are kind of occasional use things. This is definitely going to be, this is one of my frontline tools for sure. Uh, one of my four regular things I grab is uh, my 11 and one or, or now my eight and one HVAC, this and the diagonal cutters and, uh, and the multimeter. Those are my, my go-to tools. Um, so this one will be getting a lot of regular use. This, um, I like the curvature of the handle already. I'm, I'm getting used to it because I was used to the straight handles. Um, those feel nice in the hand too, but th this is a this is a little bit this can be a little bit extra nice, I think. Um, I've lost one screw shearing size here. This one does. Um, see where is that marked on there? I guess it was painted on on this side, uh, but this one does six thirty two, eight thirty two, and ten thirty two, and it and it does it does some other sizes too, some of the odd ones. Um, and then over here, you only get the two most common sizes. You get the six and the eight thirty twos. Is all that, that it'll cut. But uh, to be honest with you, I've I've only used the, the thirty two pitch ones. I, I don't even remember what the other ones are. Uh, they're twenty four threads per inch, whatever sizes. Anyways, uh, I'm sure there's an application for that, but I don't come across it very often. So this that'll be just fine there. Um, I have a crimper which is just going to be something for occasional like one if i just have one terminal to crimp i'm going to use this if i have any more than that i'm going to break out the crimping pliers and do it properly um, but what i did like about this that gives me more features than i had on the other one that i will actually be making use of is the uh see i have all the sizes i had before but then it goes into the finer strands which i do come across doing uh working on electronics and some smaller stuff so that will be a nice upgrade there and i don't don't really um for anything bigger than 10 or 12 i think they make pliers that will go uh, one size bigger uh you know 10 um they go to 10 stranded um but i got these pliers a while i actually have had these for a while um uh, they just haven't seen much use because i didn't i had them put away for some reason they weren't you know, tools never gonna get used if it was just where where this thing was but um anyway so this one does this one goes up to six stranded um and if it's any bigger than that you're probably gonna be cutting it with just a 
with something else, uh, just a, a razor knife or something like that. So, or skimmer or something like that. So, um, this one's spring loaded because it is just strictly a wire stripper. Uh, this one being that it has the crimping dies on there, and it, and it'll crimp like a couple different things actually. See, it's got all the things listed on there. It does, but I'm not gonna be using it as a crimper very much. So these are mostly going to serve as wire strippers and the occasional crimp, the occasional electrical screw cut. So I think these are going to hold up pretty nice. I think I, like I said, I think I prefer the non spring loaded. This is okay. Uh, and again, because they're just wire strippers, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, in fact, for that, it's probably better. But um, for these, I'm, gl I'm glad that they're the non spring loaded, like, like the original one. So we'll put these to the test, see how they hold up, see how I like them compared to these. I like said these are the old old reliables for me i just i was an idiot and got between got on something hot there the other day and kind of blew it up so anyways so that's that